Like you you deserve our worship you deserve adoration tonight king of kings lord of lords in the name of jesus we have come before you this evening Thank you, glory and honor dominion unto your majesty that lord have a lord take in the name of let everybody give it unto us. We thank you that we are very That is why we have come to worship you. That is why we have come to praise you. That is why we have come to adore you. Thank you, Lord. Your presence fall on me every day that I live with every breath I breathe. Let the rain know your presence, your presence fall on me. Every breath that I go, everywhere that I go, Lord, let your presence so rain on me. Let the rain of your presence fall on me. Every day that I live, with every breath I move, the rain of your presence fall on me. Everywhere that I go, let presence fall on me. Now divine joy and overflow in my soul. This heart of mine is regret and not breath. In your presence, in your presence, and so unspeakable, flow within soul, the heart of mine. Is refreshed and present in your presence. In your presence, love, love divine. Speak, within my soul, out of my. Yes, this heart of mine refreshed and not rest in your presence. 
In your presence, shall be vanquished. Loyalty, overflow, winning my soul. This heart of mine is refreshed and in your presence, in your presence, wanna be there, be seen at your table, and so surrounded by your glory in your presence that's where i always want to be to be i just want to be i want to be where you are dwelling in your presence be seen at your table and surrounded by your glory in your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Oh, God. Be near to where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Rounded by you, 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 be with you. Oh, I just want to be. Just I just want to be with you. In your presence, there is liberty. In your presence, there is joy unspeakable. In your presence, there is liberation. In your presence, there is healing. In your presence, there is transformation. In your presence, there is provision. In your presence, there is strength. In your presence, there is peace. In your presence, Madia Karaba Sotedibaha, there is tranquility. In your presence, Madia Gabarosaha, there is wisdom. In your presence, there is guidance. In your presence, there is confidence. In your presence, Lord, there is boldness. In your presence, there is In your presence, there is restoration. In your presence, there are open doors. In your presence, there are opportunities. In your presence, in your presence, there is divine understanding. In your presence, there is boldness and confidence. In your presence, there is divine understanding. That is why we have come into your presence. Because there is solace in your presence. Your word says that your name remains our strong tower. Your name remains a strong tower in our lives. Your name remains the greatest and the mightiest. The mightiest in our midst. Your word said at the mention of your name, at the invocation of your presence, demons begin to flee. Strongholds begin to give way, barriers begin to break at the mention of your name. 
Therefore, we invoke your name tonight over every prevailing situation, over every prevailing circumstance. We invoke your name tonight over every challenge in our lives. In the name of Jesus, you are the name above all names, and you are worthy to be praised and adored. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be a God. You are worthy, oh Lord, of all power. Yes, Lord. You are worthy to receive. All my praise in your presence I leave and with all I have to give, I will worship you, Almighty, glorify your holy name. I will worship you, Almighty, glorify your holy name. In your presence we live, and with all we have to give, we will worship you. Yes, Lord. Almighty yes, Lord. God, and we'll continue to glorify your holy name. You deserve our worship tonight, Lord. You deserve our praise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You were awesome in this place, Abba Father. You were worthy of my praise. You are nice to raise me. Awesome in this place, mighty God. Oh, come, let us. Adore, oh, oh come, let us adore, oh, oh come, let us adore, oh, come, let us adore, oh, come, let us adore, oh, come, let us adore, I hear the Lord is where I am. I Take your life, take charge, take control, have your way in Jesus. Amen. 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 Moving straight to our discussion signs of spiritual maturity, mm. the concept of discipleship, and under it, for us to. Discipleship has to be established that, that a disciple's aim is to grow into the full stature of Christ. Therefore, maturity is essential. We don't want to be ever learning and never growing, ever hearing and never manifesting. Even Jesus said at a point that a tree that does not bear fruit will be cut be cut off if you're a branch and you are you are being nourished you are being nutrient you have sufficient nutrients but then you are not able to bear sufficient fruit that is why jesus will look at the fig tree at a point and curse it because he's expecting fruit anyone who invests expecting to 
get some reward, some result, some, some benefit out of whatever they have sown. In the same way, when the Spirit of God is investing in using the Bible, like we talked about, using men of God, using resources, using and not using the Holy Spirit to bless us and to nourish us. There's a need for us to measure our state of maturity, to know whether we are making progress or not, to see whether we are really maturing, to ascertain whether we are making progress because you don't want to be a Christian who is experiencing redundant growth or stagnated growth. That is not our aim. Our aim is to know him more and more, mature more and more, because the more you know him, the more you align to purpose. The more you align to purpose, the more you live a fulfilling life. And that is the desire of the Lord for us as disciples. And it's my prayer that as we engage with the resource one more time and discuss, we will pick a few things from it to measure our state of maturity. And when we are mm. able to determine whether we are maturing or not, you need to check whether you are comfortable at the pace with which you are moving. And if mm. you are not comfortable, then you can make amends to necessary changes that will enable you to move as at the pace that you, you believe you are supposed to be ascending on. Mm. Exactly. All right, so let's see if we can do a quick recap. Last week, we discussed a whole lot. Even before engaging with the material, we all brought ideas and thoughts regarding what we believe is spiritual maturity and how we can determine the maturity of a person. We said a whole lot from last week. Before we get to the resource, we want to see if we can reflect. If you're a mentor here, mentee here, you should know that you must have your notes ready to reproduce what we have been talking about so we want to go into that right away any recollections from last week's session signs of spiritual maturity a whole lot was said and so we want to look at the indicators how do you know you are maturing we looked at generally how to determine whether something is maturing said mm. some 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 mm. and then we delve into the spiritual dimension so please if anything drops into your memory kindly just go ahead and share with us what do you recollect from last week's discussion okay, okay so from last week's discussion i learned that as a matured one of the signs of a matured disciple is that you are willing to serve others you serve, you, you go all out to serve others because Christianity is all about others. Just like Jesus Christ um, um, willingly was, Jesus Christ was, Jesus Christ willingly washed the feet of the disciples. Okay, so as a, as a matured um, um, disciple, you must also be willing to serve others in respect of, in respect of what will be said towards you. You shouldn't allow what people would say dwell in you, but you must be focused and you must be, you know, willing to do what your master has asked you to do. Because if you say you're going to take into consideration what people are saying, you will never do what your master is asking you to do. Okay, so that's what I learned All last right. week. And then as, as I, I learned that um, as... A disciple, you don't become a disciple and just be there like that. You transfer into others what you have learned from your master. You reproduce, okay? You transfer into others what you have learned from your master as well. And then um, you search deeper into the word. You constantly, you constantly spend time with the word. So as a disciple, if you are not spending much time with the word, then you, ha you have to sit up, okay? Because it is in the word that you derive the truth from. It is in the word that you derive your strength from. It is in the word that you, would de you derive every ingredient you will need to, you know, shaping you or, uh, yes, yeah, shaping you for the master, okay? And then as, as at the... 
as a genuine, as a mature Christian, you must, you must you demonstrate genuine love. Um, you can't say due to what the person did to you. The word of God says that we should even love our enemies. It's a hard thing to do. But once you cons cons consistently feed from the word, once you consistently uh, have time with the word, and you practice whatever you read, after reading, you meditate, and you put into practice whatever you have read, it will become part of you, and you'll be like this. See that fell on the good soil. Amen. 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 Thank you so, so, so much, woman of God, yeah. for sharing yeah. these um, insightful thoughts with us. It is true mm -hmm. that we need to ensure that whatever is being transferred in us, we try to reproduce it in others. Paul wrote mm -hmm. to Timothy and said that the things you have heard me teach, commit it to faithful men who can also teach it. So it is expedient that as a disciple, and remember, everybody is a disciple. Even if you are mm. the greatest man of God, you are still a disciple. Is that they are, we have experienced mm. disciples? I mean, it's in it's in it's in level. Some are more mature than others in terms of. And I mm. mentioned that maturity has nothing to do with your physical age. Mm. It has to yes. do with the dexterity with which you have grown to know God and assumed His likeness. So the more you see Christ in you the more you see that, the more you are behaving like Christ, the more you can ascertain that you are maturing in Christ. That is why sometimes mm. it's appalling when you get to meet somebody who is has professed to be a matured Christian. Usually it is those who assume, to, assume a certain stage of maturity who mm. take the forefront to preach the gospel and talk about the gospel. Mm. So sometimes it's appalling or disgusting or, or, or disappointing to us when we get to meet people in quotes we consider to be matured in the faith and start engaging with them at a personal level and realize that, oh, even me no. that I thought that mm -hmm. I was immature with this character and character traits you, you are displaying, you look mm -hmm. like a baby in Christ. So maturity, again, should not be measured by the things people say. The kingdom of God is not about words. It's not about mm -hmm. what we say. It is about how we live, the extent to which mm -hmm. Christ has manifested. Even the devil quotes the scripture. So don't be deceived by the what by see when you see someone preaching the word of God as I, ideally it shouldn't be so but it happened in the days of Jesus where even the Pharisees and the Sadducees people who are expected to have known the word are not able to apply and Jesus will refer to them as brood of vipers brood of vipers brood of vipers that should tell you how immature they probably were even though they knew the word of God Paul himself when he was being pursued he was pursuing the Christians. At that time, he thought he had known everything in scripture. He felt he was mature. He felt he was serving God, but he was far away from God. So it is it is important that we don't confuse knowing God's word, teaching God's word, communicating God's word with mm. the maturity of a believer. It is a character transforming ministry that mm. you seek to exhibit the fruits of the spirit, which is very mm. crucial. So that we don't get him mixed up mm. else you'll be very disappointed that is why sometimes you hear news and they're like oh this great man of god has done a b c d not mm. everybody holding a microphone is a matured believer it is mm. difficult to determine that you need to have a personal relationship with people personal relationship. Or, or interact with them before you're able to determine some of these things so please in as much as we are here sharing the word of God, don't just think that sharing insights, sharing deep understanding is enough. The woman of God was just saying that applying it, making mm. it part of your daily life, let the word become flesh. Let people see the light. Let people see the good works. Someone will mm. tell you that, hey, when I'm on the pulpit, I'm a different person. When I'm off the podium, I'm a different person. There shouldn't Jesus. be a distinction. You should be the same person everywhere. The character mm. traits 
you are portraying else you become a hypocrite you be a pretender you should be the same everywhere and so if there are things you need to work on you trust god that he will give you the grace we are not saying you should be perfect but don't pretend to be there when you are not there else a time will come when your sins bible says what well, your sins will find you out your sins will embarrass you. your mm. to disgrace you one day Jesus. so don't profess to be perfect when you are not and nobody is expecting perfection from you but it doesn't also mean that you need to be perfect before you share the word of god but don't paint the picture as if you are so holy you are so perfect you, you are like second jesus and as soon as the people begin to let them know that it is Christ manifesting in you, it is Christ at work in you, and communicate. Mm. Let people, let the people you are discipling also know that you are human. Share your mistakes with them. Let them know that you are human mm. and you are prone to mistakes. Let them see the mistakes. Don't hide too much because Jesus lived with the disciples. They saw him wake up to pray. Whatever he was mm. asking them to do, they saw him literally do it. Some, he didn't mm. even call them to teach them. They came to him and said, Master, teach us. This thing you are doing, it seems it's the source of your power. It's the source of your grace. It's the source of your anointing. We also want to do same teach us. And that is where we can see that. And so when you're discipling somebody, bring the person closer to you. Don't let the person see some of your mistakes. Let the person see, share with them your own experiences. Don't behave like an angel. Of course, there are certain things they may not be able to handle at a certain level of their maturity. But as they mm, grow, mm, let mm, them mm, know mm. that it's Christ at work in you. Let them see Jesus. Christ in you, okay? So that you don't become a negative example and a negative impact in their lives. I think this week I was I was bothered by a whole lot of things that I, I encountered this week where people mm. that we are expecting to be mentors, disciples, doing so much and becoming a role model to our young ones, are rather the ones luring them into sin, enticing mm. them into sin. And the question is, if the shepherd himself or the shepherd herself is, is, mm. is, is under attack, how much mm. impact can that shepherd make? That is why it's important that as believers, we intercede for the she she shepherds. Because the Bible says if mm. the shepherd is destroyed, the sheep will go astray. May that Jesus. not be the story of the body of Christ. Amen. Mercy Thank Lord. you so much, woman of God. Is there any Amen. more question regarding last yeah, so, um, question? Yes. So something to share. Um, a mature Christian, uh, okay, refers to a believer who has grown and developed in their faith. That mm. is their faith in Christ Jesus. All right. Grown and developed. And it has certain characteristics. Okay, so they demonstrate a strong relationship with God, one, a Christ-like character, as already said, and are actively involved in, in the work of the kingdom. Mm, All right, mm. so you can see that they desire God. They are very close to God. They are always attending prayer meetings. They are always reading their Bible. Like something, they always have spent time with God. Okay, and then you also see that they are Christ-like. You know, mm. the things that you would be struggling to, you'll be teasing them that, hey, yes, Baobed Joe back, you know, they are they have the characteristics of Christ. Yes, Baobed Joe back. Yeah, you know, and are actively involved in the work of, of, of the kingdom. You see, they've taken everything World Cup, evangelism, they are there, prayer, they are there, you know. So that is a sign. One of those signs of a mature Christian. So we we looked at something. I think in the discussion we mentioned Ephesians four thirteen, and it says that until we are we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So we said that that is the standard we are looking at to say that that is the mark of maturity when you have the attributes of christ or when you know you you have the likeness of christ okay we also said that um, a mature christian strives for unity in the body of christ so they are not people who scatter right but they are people who gather 
okay, in the body of Christ. Uh -huh. So they are able to forgive. They are long suffering. You know, they they bear burdens. It's not an easy thing to 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 be among people, but they seem to be able to get along well and take a lot of forbearance. And you also know that they, they grow in the knowledge of Jesus because of their constant Bible study and they are able to share the word of God. They seem to know a lot. Okay, so it's yeah. a sign of maturity. All right. And you can see that the what they talk about or what has consumed their minds and their behavior is, is almost like the purpose of God, the, you know, what God wants me to do, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So something wow. in Hebrews 5, 14 also alluded to this that but solid food is for the mature mm. who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil okay by constant use they've trained themselves to be evil so we said that a mature believer has developed spiritual discernment and through then. constant engagement with god's word and right. practice of applying biblical principles of their daily lives so you can see that they are well experienced. They are able to say, ah, this thing I won't do is evil. Why? They can quote your Bible scripture. They can give you an example of somebody who did it and the results that the person got, and it wasn't a godly result. You understand? Uh -huh. So, like, they, they, are, they are not novices. <laughs> they, know. They, know. They, they know a lot. They can discern. All right. And then the last one that I'll share is First Peter 2.2. 2. He said, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation all right so you can see that we can see that a mature person is not stagnant but continually seeks spiritual nourishment and growth that that's one cardinal thing you can't take their relationship with god and you always see them moving from one level to another you understand you will see them probably doing opening prayer before you know they are they are they they will do the whole prayer service before you know they are teaching others you know they they develop they they gain more spiritual um, skills to put it yeah. that way okay so they they have this hunger insatiable hunger for god's word and they pursue opportunities to express the spiritual growth and the new abilities that they have gotten so these are the the, the three things that i i i picked up mm -hmm. For, uh, Christian manager, they are Christ-like character. They are involved in the work of God, and they have a strong relationship with God. Yeah. Wow! 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 Thank you so much, man of God, for sharing such insightful nuggets with us. It's very true. The aspects that um, you blessed me was the aspect that you talk about the the desire to do the work of God. Uh, so they are not doing it for themselves. The, the heart beating it, it's, it's just the same as when you love somebody i've seen people fall in love with people and they're occupied people you see them in kitchen. somebody who probably may never enter the kitchen it has is dating um someone who is a caterer and he's all over the place helping out somebody who has nothing to do with banking bank kind of person academia it goes on and on and on just because you love the person you get so concerned about what the person is doing you are always involved well, what are you up to what's going on and if there's any help or assistance you can you want to include you do that because you love god incessantly and his work becomes your priority and in that same way mind you there are people who fake who fake it because people know that maybe people are looking for church leaders and they, they're going to be selecting people who are much some people are able to pick much who will take discernment for the person to be the selection to descend because some people can fake some people can fake faithfulness some people can even fake intimacy in front of others but if you're going to choose leaders who are mature you don't have to use optical eyes you cannot you can't descend this you need the Lord to help. That is why people have chosen leaders and have regretted. They thought the people were really mature, but as soon as they got their position, they are all relaxed and they are fine. They are not making any advance. And Pastor was saying that you see the person doing this, the next and the person has ascended to another level. The person is higher. The person. But with the first one, once they get what they are looking for, you see that there's a lot of relaxation a sense of complacency, accomplishment, and 
because if it's true maturity you're pursuing nobody has gotten there yet we have not until we become like christ until we are transformed so it's a lifetime um journey it's a lifetime you know relationship and it's my prayer that each and every one of us attain that spiritual um we do want to shift from last week before we proceed last week Okay, so my um, take home. I don't know if the English is right. Yeah. Um, we said that we should let Jesus Christ be our number one cheerleader because um, we, we should always have a time that we, we will seek the face of God and know what his will for us or his purpose for us is because if 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 we don't set apart if we if we don't set that time apart we will end up doing things that we will not be efficient in okay so we should let god be our encourager okay we shouldn't listen to what people are saying we shouldn't do things to please people we shouldn't do things to receive applause from people yes we shouldn't do things to receive applause from people you see you do something it might not make sense to them but to god it really really makes sense to him okay and then i also learned that um, we should let our primary direction come from god okay okay i will i will say it's in line with this so we should let our primary direction come from God. And then I, le- I also learned that um, when we are given the platform, when we are given the platform, we shouldn't, we, sh- we shouldn't try to receive the glory. We should learn to give God all the glory. We shouldn't think it has been by our minds or by our power that we've been able to minister or do we've been able to deliver. But we should bear in mind that it has been God. He has given you the all chance. It is even he who has made the people, you know, um, pay attention to you because some can choose not to pay attention. In fact, they can choose not to pay attention to you. It is God who has touched their hearts. He has touched their mind. He has touched their ears to listen and to pay rapt attention to you. So when everything is said and done, you should be mindful of like, you know, thinking you did it. You, you did it all by yourself. You should learn to give glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, an essential component, thank you, man of God, of being a mature believer is to be humble and know and ascribe God's glory to him. Um, Jesus said that a time has come that you glorify me, that your name will be glorified. So if you're asking God to glorify you, it is not for your own self but it is for the advancement of the name of God and the kingdom of God. And that should be the mindset of every, every child of God or every disciple of God. Thank you so much. Last week, we look at maturity in terms of um, growth. In mat- we talked about the fact that growth in maturity is expected of every believer. And we picked the scripture from Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 yes 11 to 16 Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 to 16 still trying to continue with the wake up it says so Christ himself gave some apostles and we are talking about the gifts that God has given to us evangelists prophets pastors teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity of faith so maturity, like we talked about, is, is, is a necessity. Every Christian, every disciple must mature. It's not an option. It's a requirement. 14 says that we will no longer be infants. We will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by winds and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by every cunning and craftiness of people 
in their deceitful scheming. I think I was discussing with Pastor, I think this week, about how some people are using cunning and crafty ways to be to deceive people and lure them to follow them. And we were discussing, and I realized that, yes, you can only get the gullible people to follow you. So if you don't want to be a gullible person or an immature person, you must allow the Lord to lead you. And that takes us to where uh, Pastor was sharing with us and he talked about discernment because discernment is required. Discernment, good and evil. When someone is lying to you, you can discern. When someone is telling the truth, discern what enabled Peter to discern whether Ananias and Sapphira were telling lies or telling the truth. Discernment is what enabled Elisha to know that Gehazi was lying to him. It was discernment that will, that is going to help you even in your career, your business and everything. So you will need the discernment of God. And a lot of people have been deceived. 15 says, instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head. Speaking the truth in love. People, we've come to a point in Christianity where people are not so keen on hearing the truth. They want to hear what their ears are, are, are itching, their ears are itching to hear. So speaking the truth, we don't just speak the truth. We speak in love, we speak the truth in love. And that is also another indicator of a mature person. A mature person will not lie to you, but will tell you the truth in mind. An immature person just to be loved by you verse 16 says from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting grows and builds himself up in love every joint ligament so a mature believer i believe in this case in relation to the spiritual giftings they know who they are they know what assignment has been given to them and they ensure that whatever role is given to them is played with a sense of responsibility, a sense of faithfulness, commitment, dedication, and seriousness and discipline. And so you know that you are the joint. You know that without you, the knee cannot, cannot operate. Working will be difficult. So because you know your essence, you don't take yourself out. Because you know your essence, you don't take yourself out so that your absence will be felt and people love you more. No, you stay there and let God reward you. And so even if people do not respect you, you know who you are. You know what role you are playing in the body of God. Whether someone acknowledges it or not, it does not change who you are. It does not change your approach to working. And it gives you a sense of direction and a sense of responsibility. And we looked at this one. I'll let someone talk about it. It says that without it, and talking about maturity, just without it, there can be no leadership and leaders because they are necessary to shepherd the flock of God. First Peter chapter 5, from verse 1 to 3. First Peter chapter 5, from verse 1 to 3. I'm going to put it in the chat box so that a volunteer can read and then we can share our understanding of this particular scripture. Amen. First Peter chapter five from Amen. verse one to three. All right. It's in the chat box now. A volunteer can go ahead and read. So the, the, the point we are trying to explain here is that without spiritual maturity, there will be no because leaders are necessary. To Amen. Amen. Anyone Amen. Amen. So 1 Peter 5, 1 to 3, and I read, To Amen. the elders and the flock, to the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must but because you are willing as god wants you to be not pursuing dishonest gain but eager to serve not lording it over those entrusted to you but being examples to the flock amen amen 
Amen. So we are looking at maturity because we the need for spiritual maturity in this particular context. Is there a need for spiritual maturity? And if there is, the the point we are discussing has to do with the fact that without it, you have no leaders. To what extent do you agree with this? Is it true that without maturity, we'll have no leaders? Can we have Christian leaders without who are not matured? Is it necessary for even a, a leader to be a matured believer or a disciple? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I believe the essence of a leader or uh, the essence of leadership and maturity simply emphasizes the qualities of a leader. I want to look at it from that perspective because it says that be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. So first of all, it is like a responsibility or an assignment or what to do. So a leader ought to know what he ought to do. A matured person knows what he has to do and does it willingly without being coerced or without being prompted okay if you know how to do something and you have to be begged and you have to be cajoled before you do it or because there's something which motivates you to do it then there's hmm. then you, you are not yet there because it's only a child that you have to give toffee to clean the room or promise uh, papaya before to do homework you understand aha uh-huh. then that you are seen more as a childish mentality and not having a matured you know outlook on your the tax assigned to you oh well, also, I, have a question. What, I have a question yes, on please. that so should maybe i'm the leader and i announce that anyone who is able to come early do this read their materials contribute more this person is going to receive maybe the position of the manager the position of whatever is there not motivation for someone to up their game and do more or if you are motivated by something like this it's a sign of immaturity oh no so this is this is it the position or the tax has been clearly spelled out to you right so Mm -hmm. out of your free will if you volunteer you examine yourself oh this position or this tax that has been assigned i believe i have the qualities or what it takes to get it done if you give yourself to it voluntarily and really need to come and do for me it's a sign of leadership a go-getter or somebody who has a can-do spirit you understand however the context of what you are saying is when you have to be sort of cajoled uh, we have to beg you we have to encourage you we have to motivate you. We have to tell you this item petting. We have to tell you that there are side attractions. Hmm. You know, before you would you would go for the tax, because leadership has because of the duties and the tax involved, it comes with some level of sacrifice. Yeah. And and that is a only mature people are able to sacrifice. Yeah. Only a responsible matured mother can go hungry for her child to eat. Yes, you understand? Only a responsible, matured father would, would save his money to pay a child's school fees. You, you, you understand? So that, that, and you see, you, you don't call, a, you don't, a, a suffer doesn't have to come and beg you, oh, pay your child's school fees. You know she's the future. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like, ah, you're not a teenager. Come on, you're a father, for God's sake. You should, <laughs> you know, get, better. Uh, you should know better than that. Uh-huh. So that's the point that I'm trying to drive at. You willingly execute the responsibilities and the duties that you have accepted. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, that you have accepted. I like the sound. Correct. That you have you've accepted to be a disciple, so you be that that committed to find up correct okay so um, sorry 
I mm. also have something to say. The verse three it says that not lording it over. Okay, now over can you hold God. your thoughts? I want to ask Pastor a question. It's in line with it. Um, I remember when we were on campus, anytime you are organizing programs, one of the side attractions is uh, item 13, possibly as she or shield. I think uh, Minister Kelvin just posted that. We, it always has to be in order to get people to attend. I don't know what it about. I don't know what it, it is about item 13. That always gets people there. Sometimes it doesn't even matter what it is. So for us, it is they are ready to pick the car. They are ready to come. They are ready to be. And is it wrong? We know that that is the same thing. You are not a mature person. Leadership will be tough for you. You will struggle because nobody is going to motivate you. You are supposed to be motivating others. Is it wrong to use item 13 to lure people? You know, I'm not saying that because I've seen Jesus do it. He did it once. And the next time the people have come and he's like, you point you are not here because you went to hear the word of God. You are here because of the food I gave you the last time. And I'm not sure that they gave them anything. No. How many do we, when we are discipling people from the initial stages, of course, I mean, the item 13 must be massively assured. But as we uh, make progress, at what point do we start cutting down on these things and checking at what point do we stop? When, when, when do we, you know, reach that gap okay. and, 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 All right. and, and cajoling okay. people? Because a time comes where much is expected of us. And Paul All in right. can also say that you were supposed to be cracking this thing. So probably was he babying them too much? What, 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 is, what, what is the cause of some of these things? All right. So... Okay, the same scenario about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Before he fed them, they had gone to uh, an excluded place, an isolated place. They had sat down and they had listened to him preach and teach for a very long time. Note that the people who came there, some, if a small child who said they had brought uh, two loaves of bread and two fishes, that means when they were going, a parent would have packed some food. Say that, okay, this Jesus person, we know him. He talks plenty. He'll take your day your whole day. A common bad deal. So have something. And then the commentary from Peter he said, oh, there's nothing left. Not that there's nothing. Or there's nothing left. Only this. That means that they had, the people who came had consumed Everything what they came with heard. already. But Jesus was moved with yeah. compassion because probably you no know, someone or chair your part that after they've had lunch poker like right now they'll be hungry so even going away you no know, he didn't want them to go empty so making that miraculous provision from them you no know, was a sign of you know a, an act of compassion towards them but it wasn't the main reason for the people coming to listen to the sermon the people already desired. That is why they followed him to that far place. Mm-hmm. You see, the people already desired to hear the word of life. They already valued what Jesus had, what Jesus had to say. So for me, my child is going to school. The intent is not the, the lunch pack. So, mommy, I'm not going to school today. What am I taking? Then you say, your love. No, mommy, am I going to hey, or what do you say? Okay, you are going to school today, you are going to learn this, but you know, as a human being, the person is going to be hungry, so you make provision for it. You, you understand, as a parent, I mean, when you're going to work, <laughs> you, 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 you pack your own lunch, the your, your employer won't tell you that there's like 10 30, so come and work. <laughs> Did you get it? Aha. Uh-huh. So for me, the point here is that publish what you have to publish. Give the, um, how to call it, the benefits as clearly as you think you can communicate it. You need not mention item 13. However, the people who would come and they are exhausted and you can make provision for them, then you share. That is me, my take. All right. 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 Uh-huh. 
Wow. Besides, the emphasis should not be the, the side attraction or the, the emphasis. We, we it might use... sound harsh, but I believe that should be the focus. Yes, for me, I believe that should be a focus. Yeah. I mean, like any event organizer, you take care of the things that people will need. You make sure there's a washroom for them. You make sure there's a place, a restroom for them. You know, you just think about the whole general thing, but there is a focus and a purpose why you are organizing, you know, um, that Christian meeting or that event. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm asking this because from my experience with events organizations, especially with Christian events, it will amaze you that um, someone not getting sufficient item 13 can face a whole scene. I've seen, I've seen all sorts of people that I had a lot of respect for just over item 13. And I'm how do you want? And these are not people, who, it's not like they can't afford or they are that hungry because that's the short, 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 short. Let's get our priorities right. And I have a feeling that probably the people who came again, they may not be the same people. Maybe there were people who heard that Jesus did it the last time. So as he's coming, he's probably coming to do another one. So they should want to come and enjoy that. Probably may not be the same so it is important that we get the priority right. Jesus clearly saw what they were looking for. Oh, I'm sorry. To if it's really about the food, then you are the wrong place because this is not about um, food. It's a party. It's a Holy Ghost party, but not a physical party. Thank you. And so, so again, we should remember that when we are dealing with people, depending on their maturity, some of these, these are things we used to check people's maturity. You'll be amazed. That someone you thought was so mature can misbehave just because of item 10. Just because there is no item 10 or it wasn't enough or some people that you are expecting that they should rather be sacrificed as leaders. In fact, we've gotten to the point when it comes to serve the leaders first. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I would rather wish that we will attend to the amateur or immature or maturing believers first before attending to leaders and all that. But in our case, I don't know how, why it's so. We need to take care of the leaders first. They are the priority. The, the chieftaincy honor, honorary syndrome of Africans. Unfortunately, <laughs> the Christian dome, we are not taught that. We are supposed to consider even others better, more valuable yes. than ourselves. Think about them more. Yes. Let the focus be so. I would rather want to give mine to to Kelvin mm. or to Irana yes. or to Pasta than me, the leader, being served first, being given yes. the best. I would rather want everyone to have the best portion, like Nehemiah yes. invited the people come mm. around. This is for me, but I want to share with all of you. Come around. I think mm. that if we can measure maturity, measure your maturity with how you behave around food in church, around people, in public. Check your own food. How do you behave when there's food around? As a leader, as a follower, how do you behave when the food is not up to? How do you behave? Are you ready to give out sacrifices? Yes, next? children first. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Pregnant but women, the sick, the how elderly. Do you behave? You know. When you see, do your own assessment. Check whether you are maturing or not. Thank you, um, Minister Kelvin. All right. Um, thank you. Good evening. Um, so I think that as a leader, or rather with leadership, we were talking about maturity and leadership, right? Yes. It is, so, the question had to do with uh, the need for maturity. And it, the scripture we read talked about the fact that we cannot have leaders if there are no matured Christians. That means that it's a necessity for leadership. All right, so um, when uh, when talking about maturity, it, it connotes someone who knows who knows God, who knows Jesus, um, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the purpose is or the main reason is to present the church to Christ. But at the end of the day, the main reason is to show the people Christ and of course 
um, knowing Christ, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Knowing Christ would mean that we spend spending time with Christ, and um, as we spend time with Christ, we are transformed into His image. And so Paul will say, "Imitate me, even as I imitate Christ." Right. So if the person is not mature, maturity once again, but going back to our interaction last week, uh, um, maturity is is or the measure of a uh, measure of our maturity is Christ. How much of Christ we have become, basically. So if if we are not maturing in our knowledge and our, uh, or we are not increasing in the growth of our knowledge of Christ, then leadership or being in a, in a place of leadership would not would do more harm than good. So for leaders, for example, so that was I say that the leadership is supposed to point the believers to Christ. They are supposed to be pointing the believers to Christ one, and they are supposed to be examples. Even as Christ is, um, um, they are also looking to Christ, and Christ is transforming them, and thereby causing the others to imitate them. So what's happening is that we have a lot of, as you were saying, people being in church by virtue of the fact that they are in church, by virtue of the fact that they, they are active here and there and all of that, and they are made leaders. But then when it comes to the most no, important thing, them, yes, mm. but when it comes to the most important thing, which is the knowledge of Christ, their relationship with Christ, how much of Christ is in them, how much of Christ they've grown into. Mm. It is lacking. And mm. so that, that, that's how come we would have a shortage of, or we have, would have a shortfall, a shortfall in the, 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 the people or the quality of leadership we expect because as all mm. these things you were talking about, sacrifice and all of those things, they were they are basically they are they are they are attributes of Christ. They are attributes of Christ, yeah, as He is, as um, the Bible says that um, David said, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want." Because if the Lord is His shepherd, the Lord will provide. And Jesus Christ, when He was going, He left. Uh, he, he spoke to Peter. He says that, "Peter, do you love me?" As as you also mentioned. Love is love. Love is 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 a measure of maturity. Peter, Peter, do you love me? If you love me, you will feed my sheep. Because of that relationship he has with his Christ, because of that that intimacy he has with his Christ, and so he receives of uh, the, the food from the Father, and then he also dishes out the food to the people. So uh, once that vertical link is 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 absent. Um, dashing it to the people um, or uh, serving it out to the people also would be um, would, would be less than would not meet the nutritional needs of the people because they, it's not coming from the source as it's supposed to be so yes maturity is very essential for leadership without maturity in, in the body of Christ without maturity leadership is is, is um or becoming a leader without being matured is a very, very dangerous thing. It's true. Mm. Yes. yes, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Uh, now, what are you going to say something? Yes, please. Okay, I would also like to say that before you are appointed as a leader, I think you have to advise yourself. Sit down and ask yourself if you are ever ready to serve if you are ever ready to koto to the people yeah if you're ever ready to koto to the flocks because um let's say you are a mother you can't say that once the child is growing and starts developing when you are breastfeeding the child he or she will end up biting your breast you can't say that because your breast has been bitten you stop um breastfeeding the child yes you will keep 
on doing it. Though you say, Ajesh, it's hurt and all that, but you keep on doing it. You get it. You will even forget that he did, he or she did something of that sort. And you keep on feeding your child. You get it. So as a, before you are appointed as a leader, I think you have to sit and ask yourself if, if because people will annoy you. The flocks will annoy you. You are directing them to this place. And they're also saying that, no, I want to go to this place. There are stubborn ones. Are you ready to exercise patience for them? Are you ready to keep loving them? Are you ready to keep feeding them? Because Jesus said to Peter, if you love me, then feed my sheep. Because once you have the love of Christ in you, you will transfer it into them. Once you have the uh, 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 the love of Christ in you, you will not be lordship over them. You will not like you will not see them as slaves. So you will see it as an opportunity. Yes. Exactly. You 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 will see it as an opportunity to serve people, and you will do it gladly, willingly. Who was Stephen? Stephen was a man anointed who was anointed he was filled of the spirit yet he was ever ready to serve food oh food he was ever ready to serve food he didn't say that no i'm an anointed man of god how can i be serving food how can i be directing traffic how can i be um, um ushering how how no 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 he was ever ready to play any role that was given to him Thank you. He was, Thank you. He was never ready to any role that was given to him. Are you ready to, to mingle with the stubborn goods? Are you ready to mingle with the stubborn goods? I have a comment on this one, the, the goods thing. Um, okay. this, when he's going to leave, he said he's going to separate the goods from the stubborn <laughs> He said he doesn't want to lead the goods. So please, um, your call is not to give goods. Your call is to <laughs> if you be a leader over a goat, mm. this are not people to be led. Please, you All will die of frustration. Even Jesus mm. doesn't need goats in his kingdom. You see, the issue is we don't even know who the real Christians are. That is why we are still talking about goats and sheep. That is why it is at uh, 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 that's judgment that Jesus will separate the goats from the sheep because as we sit here right now, we all claim to be goats and sheep, but some are still goats. Not everyone in church has repented. So for you yourself, <laughs> that is a humbling place and you need discernment. The fact that they said Stephen was full of the spirit and he knew that, oh, serving this widow was from God. If they, these widows were goats, he, there was no way he would have succeeded as a leader. And that's mm -hmm. another issue to talk about. However, we are not saying that some are in the goats transitioning to sheep. That we understand. <laughs> but to be a pure goat, even Jesus doesn't want to be, who am I? I wouldn't lead a goat. <laughs> However, if I see that there's a goat in you, because we, we, are, we are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. So if there's a transition between, so what we should bear in mind is that there will be people with the characteristics because they are, we are shepherding them to become like sheep. So it's a, it's a gradual process. But if someone is determined to be a goat forever, I don't see why I should worry myself. A disciple must avail themselves a disciple to be taught, okay? You must avail yourself to be taught. And you see, when someone is, is transitioned from one state to another, from a goat to a sheep, the person may become a sheep, but may still have a goat mentality. But sometimes mm. you, you don't treat them as sheep. You need to be a bit, you know, forceful, a bit, you know, goat, for lack of a better word, harsh. Mm. Because if you don't harsh. do that, you will lose them. If you don't do that, you have to let them know that hey, you are the one, you are the leader. And these are the rules, are the principles. If you want to be here, this is how you are supposed to be. And as time goes on, but then if we give them room to, to operate just because they are goats and they'll remain goats, you, the leader, don't chase you away. They're goats. Yeah. 
they'll go to frustrate you they'll go to even kick you before your time trust me i've seen goats in fact a goat has dragged me on the floor before <laughs> i was holding the leash he went round with the leaf around my leg and pulled me. <laughs> it dragged me on the floor. That is a good for you. So be careful what you choose to leave and who you choose to leave. Be sensitive to that. And most of the time, if you notice, they really they hesitate. Real leaders, when you call them, when you call them to leave, you know. <laughs> Because they know what it means to be a leader and they look at themselves and say, mm. can I? I'm not qualified. And they'll start giving God excuses. Excuses. I am not qualified. It's all because they know what it takes. But they also don't know what it takes to be a leader. They are the ones who will be competing to be leaders because they've seen their title is nice. They've seen that you sit on a nice seat. They see that people will address you with the title. So they are competing for it. The most efficient leaders of the word go. They are very humble because yeah. they, 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 they have this reluctance, not because they don't want to, but because they are concerned if they'll be able to do that. Uh, so, yes, I just wanted to check that in before you come in with the second. The good part, be careful what you choose to do. Even if mm-hmm. there's that one, people who are goats and are ready to be goats forever. It is the gods that knows they want to become sheep who are shepherded and they become sheep and then they end up as disciples. All right, go ahead, woman of God. Again, I will say that, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm. Again, I will say that you are being selected as a leader to, you know, Please, can I be here? I think loud and clear. It is. It is because of the people. It's like okay, let's take our president for example. For example, I don't know what if if what I'm about to say makes sense, but let's take our president for example. Okay, we are the reason why. He is the president. Linking it to leadership in Christianity, the flocks are the reason why you are you are you, you are the shepherd. Okay, because without the flocks, you will not become a shepherd. Without the flocks, you will not become a shepherd. Flocks are entrusted into your hands. You you, you must. You must be matured enough to you should make okay, sure give you time to put your thoughts together and I'll come back. Okay, thank you. All right. So um Delvin says the shepherd leaves for the flock. Yes. Your the essence without the flock there's no leader. And without the leader, and like exactly. we we're saying maturity you are the in fact i think that the decadence we are complaining about from the youth the youth the youth the youth i think that we need to take responsibility for some of the things that are happening because they are they they are watching us and they're doing what they see the leaders do probably we the leaders are doing it in secrecy and they see it they know it and so they go like if my pastor, if my deacon, if my leader, if my shepherd is doing this, then who am I? The one they are looking up to is doing it. And it means then it is okay for it to be done. Unfortunately, oh, wow. because you are the first point of contact in Christian Dome, and they see you do, they assume that you can still do this and it is okay. So yes, it is important for Christians to be matured before they become leaders because leaders become what the reference point. They are looking up to you. People are watching you. People are doing what you're doing. And if you we select immature people, it's like the blind guy. Jesus talked about the Pharisees and the, the Jewish leaders. And so they are like blind guys. 
they are leading everyone astray. They are leading everybody astray. May that not be our portion. We've seen it. We know it. The youth who are trying to go into politics, the same. You trying to go into ministry. They are watching the corruption over there. And they are planning to do even worse. They are sent the, the, the truth. The same in politics. And so remember that as a leader, your influence is required. Your, your influence, you, you have a lot of influence. And you have to utilize it profitably. And yes, it is required. Yes, if there's no matured person, wait till they are matured people. That is why for me, I am very slow to appoint leaders. And I'm also very slow to assume leadership roles. Very slow. Not because I don't have confidence, because I, but I know what it takes to do and what it will require to function efficiently. And then if the conditions are not there or conducive for you to do that, which you know you need to do, you'll just be frustrated yourself. And not just the one leader. It says if it's going to be a team selection, yes, you need to consider the maturity as well of the team. One person is not enough. When Moses was asked to delegate, he said that the spirit upon him fell on them. That means that there must be some transfer. There must be some likeness, like similarities between them. It was that same spirit upon, upon him. That fell upon those 70 men, 70 men or 77, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. 70 of them. 72. 72. Not of all of them. And so with this, it means that the same spirit that was upon Moses was transferred to them. And so in choosing a group, in choosing whatever, in whichever capacity you find yourself as a leader, if you are choosing a team, make sure that you can see yourself in the people and if they are, if it's not there before you appoint make sure there's some level of transfer make sure there's some level of similarity otherwise you end up a frustrated yeah you get it because until that transfer was done nothing they wouldn't have been able to help be of help to you say one thing they say another and at the end of the day we are going nowhere. So it, that 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 is a crucial component that must oh, be. It's 70. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 70. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. So only mature people can stand against the devil efficiently. This is really we are looking at the need. We'll be going back to the signs of maturity, but the discussion led us into that quickly face the need for much so we are looking at Matthew 12 verse Matthew 12 verse 29 I'm going to put it in the chat box all right oh so again how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. The discussion line says only mature Christians can stand against the devil. To what extent do you? I believe all of us have already engaged with this material. So once we are here, we are not now thinking, we are sharing our thoughts. Mm. Mm. So, a case in point is Jesus Christ's disciples who were still in training. That means they were now be matured, or they, they are still maturing, <laughs> and they encounter a demon and they couldn't cast the demon out. So, they go back to the matured uh, Christ Himself. And then he shows them, he teaches them that, oh, this kind, it goes out with prayer and fasting. All right. So that means that um, something was lacking. Either they weren't praying or they weren't fasting. Up for praying, they had, I think Jesus told them how to pray, but it was the fasting that they weren't doing. Because Jesus said, oh, when the bridegroom is here, then why should they fast? Yeah. So, <laughs> so this spiritual exercises like we learned earlier prayer and fasting is a mark 
of a matured uh, Christian, right? And a strong man in this context was referring to maybe a demonic entity, right? Who you must have spiritual authority over. Your life must be exemplary. You must be able to know your spiritual jurisdictions, your authority that you have in Christ. For you to exercise it, to bind or bound that strong man before you can cause deliverance, you know, um, to the person you are trying to help. You know, a novice obviously doesn't know, let alone has practiced, let alone has tested himself. You, you understand? Uh -huh. So that is where I, I take it from. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Prophet, thank you so much for sharing that. Only mature Christians can stand against the devil efficiently. The word is efficient. <laughs> Mm. efficiently you see as you mature in christ you don't only meet bigger battles you also face stronger temptations that is why we respect people who have matured in christ jesus will finish and say that you don't have a high priest who does not sympathize with our weakness but in everything they have been committed. we read the book of james we read Paul Christ, and we go like hey, this people it's like they really experience life because they know what it means. We listen, I, I usually will listen to Apostle Joshua Selman and I'll go like, this man really has been through the mill because everything I feel I'm going through, he kind of understands. He has been there and I'm happy to see that somebody has survived this and he's testified. It's encouraging to me. The temptations that we go through. They, people have faced it. And as a mature believer, if you have not been able to conquer, how are you going to help the other person to conquer? Now, if you've not been able to conquer fornication, how will you be able to help the younger disciple who, had, who, who is struggling with fornication? If Jesus. Kelvin, you've not mastered masturbation, how are you going to help the younger person who says, I need to do that? So before, I'm not saying you should be clean, 100%, but then Becoming a leader should tell you that, hey, there are certain things I am not permitted to do. Not because at a point, eh, you may, there are things you can, you could do and you go for, but for the sake of the people you are discipling, you have to cut it off. Some people mm. will take alcohol, but once they become leaders, they stop because they don't want to be the one to, oh, I, when I went to my Dickens house, but he was drinking alcohol. Why, maybe you drank responsibly. But this younger person may not have the self-control that you have. And so for the sake, sometimes for the sake of the people you are leading, you have to control, try and pray for grace to be able to withstand temptation. Jesus says something interesting Jesus. here. John 14, 30, he says, I will not say much more to you <laughs> for this coming. And he has no hope over me. He has no hope, meaning that he has nothing in me. Nothing, nothing. I pray that we all get there. Where we can look. Someone will come and tell the people, look, judge me. If I have done this, tell me. If I have done this, tell me. If I have done mm. this as a leader, mm. can you go to your people and say they should judge you based mm. on the standards of the Bible? Or we'll start playing around. anybody's goods. Are you... <laughs> Yes. I did take somebody's wife. <laughs> are you with me, people of God? Yes, we are you. Take express. We, sometimes, oh. because we try and we keep failing, we make it look like it is normal. To oh, people. this thing, yeah. You know, my tries are uh, mean to me. Yeah, because, it, yeah, even the bishop is doing it. Even the apostle is doing it. Even No. What is Christ saying? I'm not taking anyone is blessed. If you are slow and someone calls for your beloved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you see, as a shepherd, you're supposed to be protecting the properties of the sheep, not be stealing from them. Don't steal their oh. beloved. Yes. And he says before, so if they did, so I was talking about masturbation or fornication mm -hmm. or drinking or stealing or lying, or whatever the, the issue is. Mm. If you meet a, 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 a goat converting it to these are the things mm. they'll go through. So if you the leader, the demon 
of fornication is chasing you. The demon of stealing Jesus. is dead with you. The demon Jesus. of lies. You are speaking the language of the devil, which is lies. Oh, In this the things are what demons are born. How are you going to deliver the, the younger disciple? How are you going to manage this? We are all praying. Business? Some of us have no business in leadership, honestly. True, very true. No let's be leaders. We don't qualify. We need God to work on us. On us. On us. Look, look at what this so he has. Before you can bind the strong man, mm. or before you can take that, you must be able to bind him. What if the same strong man in this kweku is also in you? How are you going to mm. bind it? Go seek for deliverance. And that is why Jesus will say, go and remove the Lord out of your eyes first. Mm. So mm. Before you come and talk about someone's uh, in their eye. Heck. Yes. So you can see yes. clearly. <laughs> Charlie, you are go doing on. deliverance and the deliverance is not deliverance. Then. It's <laughs> the deliverance is not doing because Jesus. the same devil in oh. them is the same devil in you so they've seen their friend and they are having fun and you say they should come out come out and do what <laughs> come out <slowly. laughs> come out and do what please um if we really want god to use us in this dimension we need god. yeah true i'm not mercy, here talking Lord. about god, god saying that i have arrived i am also praying for mess i'm also crying for grace because i have my own yes. tent- that if I tell you, you open your mouth. I have my own my temptation. My God. I know this you have. after the service. Third service. I know you have it all. But if we are aspiring to be the people of God, mm. let's go beyond some of these things and ask God for grace. Because we can't be mm. helped if we ourselves are helpless. We can't Jesus. be helped if we are that Let us helpless. bring the solution. Amen. Give it out. Um, Amen. I, 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 does anyone want to say anything? Yes. We need the grace of God and we must thoroughly, thoroughly uh, be worked on. We shouldn't be too quick to, like you said, no, accept rules. Otherwise, we will only perpetuate the very bad situation and even make it worse. So, um, we need God's grace. We should we should be able to healthily decline that. Oh, this one, I wish I could, but <laughs> I need more grace and maturity in this step before. Mm. So we we shouldn't be too quick. I mean, sometimes they will entice you, they will encourage you, they tell we are standing with you, but <laughs> at the end of the day, the disgrace is on you. No, you're so, <laughs> the disgrace is on. <laughs> sometimes they need somebody as a scapegoat to just okay. say we need a leader. So. <laughs> <laughs> it will be the nice sacrifice. So we should just be very careful. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Paul, I think someone in the Bible post said that after I have preached, I will not be a castaway. Yes, yeah, so. After I have preached, I will not be a castaway. So, ha, ah, like you rightfully said, if, 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 I mean, you cannot be helpful to someone if you the leader yourself you are helpless you cannot get up and say you're going to preach about fornication or about masturbation or about some oh oh you mm-hmm. can preach or some of me are the idea and preach it but why do you say more wait for you at home <laughs> no impact you will not make impact because make impact. Yeah, yeah. the demon inside you is laughing at you laughing you're not and you're not your, your, your head becomes so heavy, like there's something weird. Like they'll be like, are you are you are you Lord, help us, help us, Lord, help us. <laughs> the demon you, you casted out will be waiting for you at home. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, what did you, you think you went to do? What did you think? <laughs> you have changed my home, so I've come to you. <laughs> My friend, my friend, my friend, stop what you are saying, cry. Now the thing is just last night you did it. Even right now, you did it before coming and saying, you know, the demon will discourage you. Oh, the Lord, the Lord is good. We go in the name of the Lord. Amen. But another thing is, if you are not in the position to tell, and you go and cast that demon out, the demon will leave because you have invoked the name of Jesus. But you put the person in a very 
in a wise state because when a demon leaves, because you don't have the capacity to help the person to fill that vacuum with something beneficial, the demon will leave and come back and see the place empty. And he will come back with seven more wicked demons. So he is mm. not just coming with ordinary for he's coming with sexuality. He's coming with other deep, seven stronger ones. Mm, 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 if you don't have the capacity to help the person, now we even tell you that don't, don't cast the demon to feet and too fast. Because mm. yes, you have helped the person, but you are creating room for seven stronger ones to come in their anger and fury. So please, let's try to, to be at a place where we can help. If God helped you through it, then you can also help other people. Are, are you getting it? Don't, don't, yes. don't assume positions where you are, you know, you are incapacitated because you will be mm. cause more harm than good. Minister Kelvin, please go ahead. What you just said, can you hear me, please? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. But your feedback is bad. Your feedback That's is your, bad. Your EMP. Okay, so, um, yeah. Can you hear me now? So um, I was saying that what you just said was um, if you remember, if you remember in the torch and the sword, um, when the 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 the, the man cut down the tree with a sword, but then um, because he didn't plant something else, the after he left the the, the, the tree grew and even became worse. It grew and became more dangerous, and so. And, and, and so, um, just as you said, it was it was indicated that, or they, they said, or the, it was revealed to him that, um, it was revealed to him that it's better if you don't have anything, if if you cannot replace it with anything, to leave it as it is, rather than cutting it down because it got uprooted cutting it down for for it to because the consequences of cutting it down are even much more if you do not replace mm. it so it's it's it's, it's a spiritual it's a, it's a spiritual law as well and then um with regards to what uh Osofo was mentioning um <laughs> A lot of the times, I, I think myself, I experience a lot of times you are told that at church, oh, they are looking for people to go and come and hold positions or to do something. You, you are sitting at your somewhere, but perhaps <laughs> uh, you are sitting at your somewhere. <laughs> and then, uh, do, you, you know, they'll come and entice you with sweet, sweet words and stuff. Yeah, but, but you also look at yourself and you're like, okay, God, no. I, I, oh, the Lord is going to be your strength. The Lord, sometimes you just get into the Lord himself who's strengthening you and all of that. Yeah, but if I, at the end of the day, you, you go into it and you, are, you become so frustrated and these people are nowhere to be found. <laughs> one, you go on Twitter because you are on the front lines, you are making all sorts of attacks. They will be the one to blame you when things are not going well. Exactly. You, yes. you, are, you are receiving all sorts of attacks because you are in the front line. We, thought, we, thought you could we pray it. for you. We will support you. We will help. Uh, no, yeah, you can do it. The person was sitting at his somewhere. No attacks were coming at him. Oh yes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Um, I think that because it looks like there's not the availability of people, they also try to um force people into such positions and sometimes yes it, it, it i understand that a certain le level of pressure is good to help you grow but sometimes too it it can be detrimental <laughs> because everyone is different oh yeah very, very suicidal suicidal yeah. hmm. Ruben, i i i yeah. under, i agree with you but sometimes then eh? I think we need the grace of boldness to say no, okay? Because in this, in 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 in, in 
Uh, now, nowadays, churches, when you say no meaning, you are being disrespectful. To God. You get it. To them. You are being disrespectful to them. Oh, God is speaking through them to you. <laughs> but you, to God, is also speaking to you. You know you don't have what it takes to do it. You know, you must be equipped enough to, you know, take up that role. And they see you do it first, second. The thing is that they will not even train you. Careful. They will not even train you. Mm-hmm. You waste your training elsewhere. They don't even know how come Amen. you've been Amen. able to. So, woman of God, thank you for your submission. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry I had to intercept you. Um, mm-hmm. Moving on. Um, I understand, like the woman of God said, leadership is a very low learn to say no and receive your own confirmation from God regardless of the pressure because in the heat of the moment is between you and the on your board when the pressure comes it is you and your board when the disappointment comes it, I'm not saying that don't accept but be sure that you are hearing people who had some negotiations uh, 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 they went through with Jesus, with, with God. Look at Moses. Look at Gideon. They wanted to be sure. Look at Gideon who said, God, if it is you speaking, do this. Don't doubt if it is the will of God for you. Don't be too, too enticed. Sometimes the people may know you physically, like I was saying. I you might be putting up the appearance of a mature person, but deep down you know that you don't have and again spiritual leadership you need a lot of spiritual power because like Kevin was talking about attacks 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 that is very true make sure that some attacks was not in my life until mm-hmm. oh you are there are certain diseases you've never seen in your life certain medical tests you never never medical reports you never expected you ever see hmm. but because you're a leader you have to pay the price. And there are certain punishments you will take. Say, leader, Moses missed the promised land. Mm. Moses missed. Look at a meek man. The Bible said nobody was as meek as Moses. Yet, people, human beings can push you to the point where you're almost, almost at the point of missing your Now, the people mm. that you are leading are getting to the promise. And you yourself, you are not able to get there. What a shock. I'm not saying it's wrong, but make sure God is speaking of leadership. Make sure you have the backing of heaven. Mm. Make sure, else you will not make it. You either not make it alive or you will not make it impact. Mm. My small one couple experience that I want to share with you. It says here that now be sharing with us a lot about the same thing. So get yourself prepared. I'm going to wrap up. That I, I shared something in the chat box. Mm. Only mature Christians have lasting impact in the world. Mm. It's true. Is it mm. true or not? Only only mature Christians can make an impact. Only mature Christians mm. can have their light shine. Only mature Christians can discuss the pressure. Only mature Christians can say no to the devil, can overcome temptation. And be examples. When you look at all the generals, read about mm. it is the 12. They were able to make impact to date mm. because they were matured. If you are not matured, you can't make any impact, even in the life of your spouse or your children. Nobody will benefit from your people. Jesus. But when you are mature, you can destroy the works of the enemy. When you are mature, mm. you can do so much for God. Hallelujah. I'm going to Amen. gel it with this point so that when you're making a contribution, you can um, include that as well. Yes. Making converts as to the number of born again believers, but making disciples results in producing mature producers who will in turn make disciples. And we mm. also said that only disciples are able to make impact. Okay. What do you have to say concerning these two points? Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyone? 
making convert at yeah. yeah Kelvin. Okay, so um when you make a convert, you are yes, you are adding you we go out, we speak the word of God to people, we evangelize them and then they come to Christ. Now that's it's 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 you you they come into the church and do stuff and perhaps maybe one day they might also decide to uh, join the evangelism team and then go and then uh, preach the word and then maybe someone might be saved and come inside. But when it, when that and that is a that is a, a possibility. However. When a disciple is made, when the person is, is brought in and then the person is actually disciple, it moves from being a problem. Kevin, can you do something? A... We can't hear what you're saying. All right. I'm saying that. Are you using no, your earpiece? feedback? Your feedback. There's something. All right. Is it better now? Are you using an earpiece? Um, yes. No, I'm not. I'm not using that earpiece. My, my phone speaker is closer you... to. So are move you up. It? Move, separate yourself. Do something. Are you charging the phone? I don't know. I've taken it out. I, I, I was, but I've taken it out. Yes. So can you go away phone. from the speaker or something? All right. Okay. I'll take it from the speaker. All right. Can you hear me now? Is it better now? Oh, uh-huh. this is good. All right. I've taken it from the speaker. So I was saying that. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Um, look in the chat box for the, the question. Yeah, one second. <laughs> Only mature so, precepts can have a lasting impact in the world. And we yeah. said that many disciples. Okay, are okay yes, other. yes. Okay, so I was saying that um, when it, it, it comes to convert, bringing in converts and stuff like that, what which is what is happening in a lot of the a lot of our churches? They come, the converts come into the church. The person stays in the church a while, joins the ushering department or joins the evangelism team and stuff like that. And so we see it, or even joins the choir. And then one time the evangelism team is going out. They go out with the evangelism team and they talk to somebody. The person comes to the church. And then there's a possibility that that might happen, you know, but it's not a certainty. But then, and 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 the growth is the the growth is is it it can be um, someone who say linear. Um, you understand? But then when break it down, you when when I say linear, meaning that. It, it, it could be just it, it's something that just can be measured in one line just from you you bring that person that person maybe bring one person it's even a possibility a probability it may or may not happen you understand but then when investment goes into maturing the person discipling the person and then mature uh, and through discipleship the person becomes like the discipler you understand what happened or becomes like Christ what happens is that now, the person will start to win or bring in souls like Christ did. Now, Christ, through his disciples, Christ brought, um, he drew unto himself many people, amongst which were the 12 disciples. But then there was the 70, there was the 120 as well, amongst others. You understand? And his his impact was felt. His impact was felt even and his, uh, till date. Uh, and, um, and his disciples also discipled other others and then by doing so it spread throughout because they were disciples and they had been discipled and so the value of a disciple is not a probability it's a certainty growth Mm. is a certainty when it comes to discipleship and um and it's 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 it could be it could be a more it could be multiples or it could even be exponential the growth i mean you understand and and so the, the the so there's a clear difference between a convert, just a convert, and then a disciple in terms of their value, in terms of their value to the church, in terms of their value to um, um, the body of Christ, when it comes to reproducing, reproduction, bringing in, producing others like themselves, okay. bringing okay. in others, because of course, if the 
convert is going to bring somebody like himself, uh, it's going to be a whole mess. Yes. So that that's I think that that's the main difference. That's the main value of a disciple of 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 a disciple. So um, a story said of um one of the one of the preachers of old. He held a a, a crusade. And then in that crusade, he made he made he called for the salvation of people, and only one person came forward, and that person was saved. Now, after that person was saved, that person came to become one of the greatest preachers of all time. Graham also. I think I, I, I think so, or something like that. Yeah. And so I I don't recall the exact name. Yes. And so the person and, and the person brought in droves and droves and droves of people. And so and so because that person was discipled, because that person grew, because that person matured, the person brought in droves and droves of people. And so that person was worth that input that was put into that person. You understand? Well now maybe there might have been others alongside. But perhaps the the the, the 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 much was not invested in their growth as well, or in other instances, in other in other in other um, um, crusades and things that have gone a- around. People have okay. been saved a million, two million, yeah. But perhaps much is not really invested into their growth, and so. If one person is able to do this, don't you think that a thousand, two thousand people who have been saved would do much more? So it All means right. there's a clear cut difference when it comes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that's that's it. Thank that's you. It. Yes, please. Um, I believe you are right. I think that the incessant desire to have a large number of people. <laughs> which you are ministering to has probably been the cause of this where we want to see the crowd bring in the context anything together but very when once the crowd is there and we have fed our ego with a huge congregation we are preaching get satisfied but Jesus will still bring the crowd and gather a few people with had the 17, he had the 12, he had the 3, and he was in pattern. So that he couldn't get the whole crowd to become disciples, but he could get them. Out of the 17, he still identified who were more efficient, who became apostles. Out of the 12, there were some really exceptional ones. The message here is this in as much as you are excited to talk to the crowd. Be also interested in discipling. Because when you are too satisfied with the crowd, you will not make disciples. Because disciples are not made in big congregations. You make them in it's in the smaller groups, the self-meetings, the one-on-one, the, the mentorship sessions. The, these are how disciples are grouped. Because it's an individual affair. It's a smaller group that you can make more impact because that is where you can engage and know what is in them, whether what you've taught them is there and how they are applying it and make corrections when they need. So in as much as you are expected to make disciples, don't just be satisfied to have a group. In fact, some, I see myself to be someone who, who I'm being a disciple and I'm trying to make more disciples. That is what Anikom is all about. And so we are not, you won't see us looking for, no, we know that we believe that even if it's one person, if it's two people, if it's three people who have submitted themselves to grooming, training, the impact they can make is more than gathering 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, 50 people as converts. And giving them milk, milk, which is good. Someone is doing that already. The churches are doing much of that already. So what is the essence of adding that? The one that is less than that we are focusing on. Are you getting it? 
So yeah. since you have identified it, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? I wish I start, someone started discipling me very early to be a minister. Probably I wouldn't be here today. I wish I had I had somebody to just hold my hand like I, I'm doing for some people and guided me. What I couldn't experience is what I'm trying to do for some, some, some of us. And the question is, who, whose hand are you also holding? Whose life are you impacting? Mm. You are getting True. it. Let's, let's make sure that, yes, converting is good, but equip yourself enough to disciple somebody as well. Because that, if you want to make exponential expansion and growth in Christendom, that is the way to go. Amen. Converts are Amen. good. Disciples are more profitable because the 12th, is the reason you and I are here. I mm. think my mm. making more and more and more disciples. Ephesians points of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, there are some uh, points in the chat box we didn't finish from last week. The need for spiritual maturity. Look at growth and maturity. Growth is expected, like we talked about earlier on. Um, fruitfulness is good. We talked about progress that we shouldn't be satisfied with where we are in our service to God. We look at the parable that talks about as we step forward, the more added, so the one who is not making production, making any uh, productive use of God has given the accomplishment of us to thank you for what God has asked you. And then we look at the humble and willing attitude that we've not talked about. And then the last one we will talk about for tonight is a standard of excellence in mm. our lives in general. That the third point is a standard of excellence. Second Corinthians says, it says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice. Let me let me let me put that in the chat box. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. And the love of this is the standard of perfection. To what extent? Measure yourself. Me let's measure ourselves. To what extent are we able to act? Measure yourself. Are we there? Are we making yes. it? All right. Take your final way to let me wrap up. Mm, the word strive for full restoration <laughs> um, hits me the, the most. Yeah. Actually, I was that's what I was studying about to today. Uh, when did it be restore my soul? So I was delving into what it actually meant in a few scriptures. And I realized that restoration of soul is, is very critical uh, for maturity. Because that is where you deal with the wounds. That is, you deal with the hurts. That is where you deal with the shortcomings. All these Pastor, things. Please, just a second. Um, now, you talk about encourage one another. Kelvin, you talk about be of one mind and even in peace. So whilst Pastor is doing the restoration. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so the restoration of the soul is, is very key. And that means that um, you should spend time in the presence of God so that whatever which is not of God, which was written into your soul, you can it can be un erased or overwritten or uninstalled and install what God actually has, wow. has for you. All right. Because without without that restoration, you, know, you will still be. You'll be like that ground where, uh, you know, the word of God can't sit. It will fall by the wayside. Um, doubts would compete with the word of God. 
you know, um, you know, you like there'll be no death for the seed of God to grow and to multiply and to be fruitful and all. Because the soul is where the word of God is, is planted. Okay. And that is where it's supposed to, you know, uh, bear fruit mm. and, and have an effect on you as a minister of God or as a child of God. Mm. So that aspect of you, your soul, your mind, your emotions, your, you know, your will, all these things must be surrounded to God. And you must, you must really, actually, that is what we are supposed to do for our children immediately they are born. Mm. We are supposed to expose them to the word of God, especially the first seven years. But we take we we water down the word of God to them. Nice. But the word communicates very complex things in very coded language, and it is deep inside their subconscious. And once they grow up, it is triggered. But that is what we are Christians are supposed to do. Put the word of God in our children so much, especially in the early years, that when they grow up, the Holy Spirit will have a basis to stir up that word of God in them. And that is the only thing um, I believe we should strive for. I mean, if you're already grown, then you, your work is twice as hard. Yeah. That means more time in the presence of God because you forget, you, you tend to forget very easily. You know, not only memorization, but you know, habits and all those things. You've grown with it. So you must be very, you must work very hard on your subconscious mind and, yeah. you know, your soul. So yeah. yes, we should seek restoration. <clears throat> restoration in the presence of God. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, prophet. When the Bible says, train up the child, the way you should grow. The formative years are the best time to, to, you know, bring them up. So when they grow, so if they grow and they are departing, it means something was missing when they were children. First seven years, no, no sex, no sex. First seven years. Wow. Thank you, Pastor. Woman of God. Thank you. So um, encourage one another. The Bible says that the students for hey, safety. Woman, God, hold on, there's a comment from Kelvin. He says, full restoration means there can be past restoration. Yes, partial restoration. You see, restoration basically means reconnecting back to God. Before man fell, he had a relationship with God. Before man was created, God had an agenda. He says, what? Let them have a he wants to have fellowship and we broke that fellowship sin. and so all Jesus came to do was reconcile, reconcile us back to God back to our old our old relationship with God and so restoration if it's special it means it's, you are, it's not fully done and so we're transforming back to Jesus Christ going back to Jesus Christ is the process of restoration we trying to look like Christ. We following Christ. We having intimacy with God is literally reconciling us back to God. Are you getting it, man of God? So yes, if you are supposed to have converted, you don't want to be a sheep. Now you've converted to be a sheep. You've taken the identity of a sheep. But you don't want to renew your mind. You don't want to change the goat mentality. You still want to carry the goat mentality around. That's a partial restoration. It's not complete. You want to become fully like Christ, you need to know that the sheep can be the mm. All right. Um, sorry for intercepting. Woman of God, please go ahead. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So um encourage one another. The word of God says that do not forsake the gathering of the of the believers. Okay, so mm -hmm. Personally, I believe that um, when believers gather, you know, when believers gather, there's this uh, fire that is rekindled because um, let's say you are a Christian and you are a Christian and then um, you might be going through some trials, you might be going through some temptations. You need you need, you need other believers. 
need other believers to, you know, um, encourage you, to motivate you, to give you the rest assurance that there is hope. Okay. So, um, so um, the word of God again says that if 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 a brother is, 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 if a brother is caught in sin, do not rejoice over that brother, but mm. rather. Uh, but rather, you know that you think you are standing firm, you have to be watchful. You have to be watchful. We are, as 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 matured as matured Christians, we are to be there for one another. Okay, we must be there for one another because when we gather, when testimonies are being shared, it creates the atmosphere for another one to be. When we gather and tell being shared oh one one is being encouraged one is being motivated that, oh, at least there is hope for me so this right. thing that my sister and the lord paved way for him or her oh okay i will be able god will also do mine for me my time a time will come that i will also come here and testify to it or when testimonies are being shared people tap into it they so right. see yes and then they end up also you know, um, we, we they end up also sharing the same testimony. So sometimes they'll be like, okay, so this is that shared head. When I tap into it, I saw that he, and God has also delivered me from that problem, from that frustration. So as Christians, we must be there for one another. Okay, you we must be united. Okay, we must, you know, when, when you take it in, just as Breaking it is very easy, it's very easy and fast. But when you take the entire broom, the entire broom with a rope tied in it, uh, with, with a rope, with it tied with a rope, and you try breaking it, it becomes very, 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 very what difficult. So when we meet like this and we encourage one another, the devil has no way, has no. But it does not give way to the devil to discourage us at all. It doesn't give because we are humans. One way or the other, you may fall into sin. You may yeah. fall into sin. It's not rejoicing over one person's sin. You should rather encourage the person. You should rather motivate the person. Yeah. Encourage the person to do scriptures. Encourage the person to sing hymns when he is sorrowful, when his soul is sad. Be singing yeah. hymns. And praises. I mean, Paul and Silas, when they were in jail, they were singing hymns and praises. And look at the glory that came out of it. Okay, because ah, how can, how come I'm doing the work of God and I'm being beaten? They were being beaten before put in jail. Okay, how come I'm doing the work of God and I'm being beaten? Ah, they sang hymns to to waking up their soul. Okay, in order not to be discouraged in God. They, they were there for one another. The word of God said that iron sharpeneth iron. Iron sharpeneth iron. Pray, I pray. And then there is heat. Okay? There is heat. When believers come together to pray, you are encouraged to pray more. Sometimes you even leave the premises and you are still speaking tongues. Ah. It happens to the prayer points keep repeating itself. It keeps echoing. You you are standing there and you are speaking like your your mouth is moving now it's moving. You are saying something. No, you have closed from, from the meeting. You are still on fire. That zeal to pray is still there. You get it. You don't even feel for food. Your sound keeps fluctuating. Be stable with the voice. You don't even feel like eating. You don't feel like fulfilling the desires of the flesh. You feel like My you know, God. still being in the spirit. You, so as believers, we have to be there for one another. That was why Amen. the disciples they were there for one another. See, when James was was put into prison Great. by Herod, Great. oh God. They, they, they were the they, James was killed, and uh, Herod realized that it pleases the people. Then he mm. caught Peter. They didn't sleep. Oh. 
they prayed. They prayed fire for fire. This one will fire. This one will fire. This one fire. This one each other like the way they pray for each other. Or we'll be happy. Peter, you pray. She minister any kakan kaka o de wa kwajia swana si si aya cho like that. But do we still pray for each other? Can we still pray for each other? like oh, this? Yes, we can. Do we it do it? It's possible. It is not it is not the reality. <laughs> anyway, nah. please before you continue, let me salute the presence of Pastor Oshuku. You are welcome, Pastor. Hey, the man of God, the bishop. Yeah. We salute him. Protected. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Man of God, continue. Uh, is it how we do this thing? Is it is it because it, it looks like when someone falls, we are ex in fact we are looking at in fact when someone falls in Christian or they don't come to Christian, we are running away from them. We are the critic, mm. we are the ones to say the worst things. Even when you are doing something good and calamity befalls you, don't we were amazed with Christians. What did we get? How did we get? The word of yes. God rests us. We're supposed to be encouraging each other. You are doing something, support the person. But it's like we are wishing each other evil. We are we are mm. wishing, we are hoping that evil will befall one another. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. There's immaturity because the measurements for Thank maturity you. Is that we are supposed to look at it. Excellent maturity. Mm. Mm. Try for full restoration. Encourage one another. If you're in the ministry mm-hmm. of discouragement, then you are not mature. You are not mm-hmm. nowhere near being a disciple. Thank that you. is what I'm picking here. All our sister is saying, brotherly love. Encourage what you are even afraid to forget share your testimony. about it. Hey, you, are not you are annoying somebody with your testimony. You you Thank you. Woman of God, please wrap up yes. and then Minister Kelvin will yes. come in. Yeah, so I would say that we shouldn't even wait for one to four. Hmm. We should say. constantly be there for one another. Constantly. We shouldn't even wait for the disgrace to happen. We shouldn't even wait for, uh, um, uh, yes, like I said, for one to four. Thank you. Constantly. Constantly. And I'm sure when they prayed, it was... Peter was um, uh, um, delivered from jail. I'm sure they kept on praying. They kept on praying. They kept, even when they were, some were caught in jail, they kept on praying. They, kept, they never stopped sharing the word of God. They kept on doing what they were supposed to do. So as believers, we must be. Okay. Amen. Amen. For one another. We must <laughs> come for will not have. Amen. He will not have his way. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Um, Kelvin. All right. Um, so I I'd like to share this scripture. Um, Philippians two, verse five, and basically Philippians two, verse five. It says that let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then when you go to verse 7, can you hear me, please? Yes, yes please. Yeah. Excellent. When you go to verse 7, it says that verse 6 says, Who be in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal to with God, mm. but made himself of no rep- repute, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made unto the like uh, was made in the likeness of a servant. Mm. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death mm. on the cro- of the cross. So um, I'm just saying that we should, we should, we should. When it comes to the mind, we should, we should just follow the the the, the footsteps of Christ. Mm. Um. We ought to be of the same mind, the same mindset. Because imagine if all of us are of the same mindset, this particular mindset, not thinking it's robbery to be, to be, to be called the son of God. But he 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 brought himself low to be called a mere man, not even that of a, the, the the son of a king or a, a, a prince, but then to even be the the son, the child of a carpenter, a lowly person. 
just mm. let this mind and then in all of that he says that he was even obedient even mm. unto his death yes mm. so so um if all of us if the body of christ if the entirety of the body of christ are to go by this mindset seeking to fulfill the purpose and the mandate of god for the kingdom of god and then towards each other towards each other being as servants for towards each other being as servants towards each other living for others and then being obedient unto the call of god i think that the, that that would it would uh, the 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 level of the explosion of the power and the, the presence and the glory of god over the nations is going to be massive if only just these things just these things are done because we are imitating our christ and then christ mm. will be seen in us so mm. i i think that's that's just um what i'd like to share amen 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 thank amen. you for amen. There's no better way to wrap up this with, than with this particular point. As a, a standard of excellence in our lives in general. I was thinking they're going to say that the standard of maturity, the standard of excellence is to be able to cast out demons, to be able to prophesy, to be able to speak in diverse kinds of tongues, to be able mm-hmm. to pray for 10 hours continuously, to be able to heal, to be able to do so much. If we are able to do all this demonstration of power in the absence of full restoration, ability to mm. encourage one another, be in one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace dwells with you. Linda, if you're able to do this, then the God of love and peace will be with us. Is it possible that we are living Christian race, we are running this Christian race without love and the peace of God with us? In as much as we are pursuing power, in as much mm. as we are the mighty, mighty, miraculous things that we are, we need. The fundamental, one mind. What is that mind? That we are all seeking. Mm. If you have one mind, the enemy cannot pe- penetrate. Those building Jesus. the Tower of Babel, even God could not defeat them because he said they had one mind. The mm. If you have one mind, there's nothing you cannot build. If you have one mind, there's nothing that you want to do. Because the church came together and prayed for Peter, they had one man, one heart. And mm. that is what the devil is attacking. He's attacking our ability to, he's attacking our ability to have an excellent standard in our lives. Mm. Live in peace. Are we really living in peace or we are living in hypocrisy? Are we Jesus. living in We talk about a lot of things. And I believe that we our attention to a whole lot that we need to focus on. We just want to pray briefly for ourselves as the man of mm. God has to do every presentation on the book. How to say, you know, I'll leave it to talk about it, but just pray for yourself in a space of yes, a minute. Lord. Saying that, God, I Jesus. see my I see my mistakes. I see where I need to work on another a short Christian. Father, restore us back to your love. Father, help us to encourage one another. Restoration, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we Restoration, Lord. Restoration of my In the name of Jesus, I pray for that you, I will know you, I will mature, I will I am tired of this marking Jesus. time in my Christian world. The marking time. I'm tired of ability to grow. I am tired of my inability to of my inability to even make disciples. Father, help me, Lord. Help me to mature. Give me grace. Give me strength. My dear. 
خاصی که تیری ینده هم How much mm. impact can mm. you make? We said that you put the person yes, yes. in danger because when you cast that spirit out, seven more stronger demons will come. You are casting out, but you cannot help the person out of it. You cannot fill that gap with something useful, something beneficial because you yourself, you are struggling. You are struggling mm. with anger. You are struggling with Jesus. addiction. You are struggling with trauma. You are struggling with Jesus. so many things. Right? So mm. many things. And yet you want to help somebody. How? And the blind lead the blind. We must take the oh. Lord first out of our own eyes. Help then me, we Lord. can now be able to help others. You are saying that me, every deficiency in my heart, this one, I don't need you to even pray loud. In the Jesus. solitude of your heart, I don't want to hear your Mercy, own. Lord. I, I also mm. don't want you to hear my own. <laughs> pray. <laughs> pray and say that, Lord, have mercy on me. Mercy that this issue you, of fornication, this issue of masturbation, Let this issue of Death, this issue Let of gossiping, this plague, Madia Karaba, of bad fights, whatever that die. you are struggling with, call on Jesus. God to have mercy. Call on God to deliver you. Blood, Put your hands on your heart, wherever you are, and say that Spirit of God, deliver me from this. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Make us honorable vessels, Lord. That has incapacitated me. Honorable vessels, Lord. That has incapacitated me. That I'm able able to make impact, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let them be delivered. Let them be delivered. Let them be delivered. In the name of Jesus. Within us, oh God, Masun that that is that is the stumbling block. Let it be removed now. Let it be removed now. Let the let the yokes be broken. Let the yokes be broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Our impact will be felt. We couldn't talk about. We will talk about yes, it. Lord. We Amen. have received freedom, and from today, yes, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which we have experienced, will be Let our testimony. Will be our testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for sharpening us. Thank you for visiting mm. us. We yes, are aspiring Lord. to become addicted disciples of you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Steady, continue to reveal yourself to us, your will to us. Yes. The name of Jesus. Spirit mm. of God, as we move into our second session, continue to be with us and empower us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We have, Thank um, you, Holy Ghost. In the next presentation from the woman of God now. She's been reading a, a very short one. Past yes. <laughs> We've all been taxed to read this book. It's a 20 page book. What's the title again, Woman of God? Learning to say no without feeling guilty. Learning to Amen. say no without feeling guilty from Robert um, Len, uh, Robert Leardon, right? The same person who wrote God's Generals. Yes, is it Robert? Yes, please. He's yes, the one. We've all read that material. If you haven't read, Kelvin, you are doing the next presentation next week. So she's sharing a summary of the first 20 pages with us. Mm. The woman of God. A very short one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If you have a change, <laughs> go ahead. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, so with this book, Learning to Say No Without Feeling Guilty, okay, is a book written by Robert Leardon, as Minister Stacey said. Okay, so he became born again and got baptized at the age of eight. 
Okay, mm. as I've been cut up, yes, at the age of eight, as I've been cut up to heaven. Several years later, the Lord Christ commissioned him to study the lives of God's great generals. That's the men. Mm. Okay, and um, men and women who were mightily used by God. Okay, okay. in order to learn why they succeeded and why. Him. So Robert spent six years fulfilling this commission, commission, and in the process, he became one of the youngest apostolic historians in the world. Hallelujah! So um, he has a whole lot of books. He has written a whole lot of books. He goes around preaching and teaching in churches, Bible colleges, and university. Okay, he's a very great man of God. And he has traveled to most parts of the world. Hallelujah. So, Diana, check your sound. It keeps plateauing. That's please, please, a minute, please. I'll finish. Say no. Say no saying no and i'm saying that no is a life-saving word that is found or said via lots of channel okay so on tv we hear the word no on radio newspapers magazines on billboards etc okay it is therefore important for you to discipline yourself and realize the essence of saying no to some things and sometimes okay okay so no is just two letter words. No is just two letter words that everyone must learn to say it. Even children. I have a little cousin. And whenever my grandmother is giving her something or trying to take something away from her, she, she likes saying no, no, no. And she says it with goodness. Okay, so as Christians or as 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 as, as believers, we must learn say these two letter words okay you must not find it hard to use it okay and then again we must we sometimes do not know what when to say yes and when to say we sometimes say yes because we don't want to look bad in the midst of people or we want everybody to like us and it's not normal when you are being liked by everyone then there's yeah. something wrong with you. yes because I don't know why Eve said yes to the serpent when she was supposed to say no. Mm. Mm. Like by now, oh Jesus. Like by now, I wouldn't have known what I wouldn't have known what death is. In fact, I'll be working freely, doing good. But look at the end results. Okay. So sometimes we end up saying yes and we end up, you know, creating a whole mess. Mm. Abraham should have just said no to Rebecca. So hey guy, you should have just said no to Sarah when she brought that suggestion, but the look. Hey, I said Rebecca. It's in order. So the B says that you must check your joy and peace gauge. Okay. It's not wise to advisably or advisably to serve God with bitterness. Okay, it is not mm, quite. Mm. Sometimes you might say yes to something, but deep within you, Charlie, it's a big no. But because you don't mm -hmm. want to be, you end up saying yes, and you are doing the thing for God, but it's not coming from within. Okay, mm. if there is joy in serving or rendering of service. There's no words, joy. We are not getting some of the words. Okay, sorry. If there is no joy in serving or rendering mm. service, God or the body of Christ, then something is wrong. Something mm. is wrong. You have said yes to something whilst you should have said no. Hallelujah. Amen. David said, I will, they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Then why are you sad in the house of the Lord? Why? It's hmm. a big question. As we journey through question. Must check if these words are making life worth living. Okay, wow. as we through life, we must check if these words are making life worth living. You know, you are supposed to say no, 
but why do you go ahead to say yes? You know you are supposed to say yes, but why do you go ahead to say We must know when to use these words because they are very, very powerful, okay? If you begin, mm. if you begin to say no, soon you will know how to say it and smile. Oh. Wow, wow. Yes, you no is a wonderful way. But before you say no, you must think. You don't just get up and say no. Oh, okay. So let's say someone, someone um, say you something. Me. No. Okay. You marry me. Oh, give no. me some time to pay. Uh-huh. You don't just get up and say no. Maybe, maybe this is the right person for you. But because you have, you know, turned down the proposal. When you come back saying that, okay, uh, I've, I've changed my mind. Tell it, you've already made your let's decision your yes, already. Yes, and let your <laughs> that is it. Okay, so with the second chapter. So quickly. Mm-hmm. With the second chapter, it says that the first no. The first no. Okay, yes. so um being hey, a first chapter. <laughs> being a there are three answers God gives. There are three answers God gives to his children, which are yes, no, and wait. Okay. The plans God has concerning his children are not of evil, but to bring us to an what expected end. God gives no in order to protect our personal life, family, businesses. In church and the nation as a whole. Sometimes when we receive no from God, we think He has turned us down. Mm. Because maybe you don't have what it takes to handle that thing. You don't have what it takes to handle what you are asking Him of. Okay, maybe He has to take you through some stages in life before you'll be able, he, before you'll be able to entrust that thing into your hand. Okay, so when you receive a no from God, don't think that he doesn't like you or he has turned his back against you or he has turned you down, okay? Never try to negotiate with God when he gives you no as a response. No wow. is a no. God, God, God is not a 50-50 person, okay? He's not a 50-50 God. If it's yes, it's yes. If it's no, it's, it's no. If it's wait, you wait. Mm. Never baggage. Never negotiate with him. If should have said no to the serpent without wondering over the suggestion of the snake, she should have just said no. No. But she went ahead to, you know, to be thinking, uh, to, to, to throw thoughts on the suggestions of, of, of the snake. Again, God knew us before we were born. So he knows what is best for us. Adam and Eve had obeyed God's first no. Mm. When I will be having fun. By now, if Adam and Eve had obeyed God's first no, you and I will be, you know, living real life. We'll be living real life. Again, never allow your mind to be enticed by what is not in line with the will of God. Never allow your mind to be enticed by what is not in line with the will of God. You will soon act on that enticement if you do that. Hmm. What you think about is what you end up doing. Okay. What you think about is what you end up doing. Success is built on how many times you say a strong and a bold no. Success is built on how many times you say a strong and a bold no. Hallelujah. Amen. So the two B says that no runs from the appearance of evil. When you read Psalm 1 verse 1, it says that no never st- stays in a place where evil abounds. No never stays in a place when evil abounds. No is very hard to say, but a certain spirit is lifted up from you when you let it become part of you. Okay. It's hard to say, but a certain spirit is lifted up from you when you when when you allow it to become part of you. No makes you unique. Mm. It stops of doubt and guilt and so on. Okay. No is a word said everywhere, 
in the universe. Even children, like I said earlier on, understand what it means to say no. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so with the third one, please a minute. Okay, so with the third chapter, it says that say no to the flesh. Say no to the flesh. So Samson in Judges chapter 16, it says Samson was anointed man of God. He was the strongest in his time to the extent that no one could defeat him when it comes to battle. And he was respected as what? He was very handsome. And you know, most women liked him. And he's, he liked women. His problem was that he couldn't say no to his flesh. Look mm. at where, what, where he ended up. Delilah was able to lure him. He was able to lure him. He was not supposed to marry a foreign woman. He was supposed to marry from his tribe. But he chose to marry a foreign woman. And look at where the foreign woman and, and landed him. Look at what happened to him. So you see, his parents were not so firm in bringing him up, I would say. They were not so firm. Before you say no to someone, you must first of all learn to say no to yourself. You must learn to say no to yourself. How do you say no to yourself? Sometimes you have the feeling, you have you feel like praying, but Charlie, your bed is also calling you. It is saying, come, draw closer to me, lie hey, down, leave some rest, yeah. take some five rest and then you wake up and it's six o'clock meanwhile you signed your mind to pray at dawn you yes. signed your mind to pray at 4 a.m but Charlie does sleep you know ah five minutes has turned to a five hours hey and you wake up and you're like oh god what have i done you see when you when you don't learn to say no to the flesh this is where this is what this this is what will like this, this is what you end up facing. Hallelujah. Chapter 4 says that no is not maybe. Most often as a Christian, and you have to be true to yourself. You have to be true to yourself. And people, when you are silent, it means it's a yes. Oh, please, can you leave this uh, um, 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 session for us? And then you are quiet. Okay, she has accepted. Oh, she hasn't said anything, so she has accepted. Okay, we can move on. <laughs> the Bible says in 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 Revelation 3 15 to 16 that if you are hot, be hot. If you are cold, be cold. You can't be lukewarm. You are saying yes, but deep within you, you know that thing. You know that it's and be free. Say it and be free. Oh, I have not prepared enough. Please, can it be given to another person so that unless that? But because you don't want to be tagged as a disrespectful person, so you go ahead and say yes. See, Samson accepting to be to to end up with Delilah did not end there. She went ahead to find out from him daily where his strength came from or where he derived his strength from daily before, before he, he was making jokes out of it. By the end, the woman was like, if you love me, you will not yes. treat me this way. Yes. And he ended up giving up. He ended up giving up. And look at what happened to him. He couldn't stand it anymore. And he let the cat out of the basket. He said his secret. He said his, his secrets all because of love. Hallelujah. If he had listened to his parents, all these things wouldn't have happened to him. When you mean what you see, people will not go ahead to seek for further explanations. When you mean what you see, people will not go ahead to seek. Hallelujah. Amen. We will be victorious. We will boldly say no to the devil. Mm. Ah. Ah, your flesh is seeking for something, for some desires. Ah, say no to this thing. Yes, the devil yeah, will flee away from you. He will flee away. 
it takes you know, I hope it's grace to to run away from temptations. So when someone falls in a temptation, Charlie, who are you to talk about it? Who are you to go to that person? It takes only takes grace. One of grace. Us. You are seeing this handsome man. You are seeing money there, and, and you are saying that you are passing by. No, no, no. You can't pass by it. It's not normal. Oh, it takes grace. It takes grace to bypass thousand dollars. It takes grace. And someone sent me to take something from her car. And when I went I, I, at the booth, when I went, she has she has kept money. That I was like, ah, what kind of temptation is this? God, <laughs> this person, the devil is a me. I closed my eyes. I said, I I took I took my eyes off the money and looked for took what I was asked to come and see. Immediately, I closed <laughs> the booth. You will allow me. You not get me. How can you keep money at the booth? Why? What is all this? Oh, <laughs> Like, I think she was coming from the bank by then. I was like, oh, what is this? No, 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 no. You know, I you do this to me. <laughs> How can you dress like this? Yeah. Eh, it is great. The guy, you are seeing a lady sky and all that, and you are no it is great. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so the fifth mask. No, no, saying no cannot always be nice. Okay. Aaron wanted to, you know, look good in front of the Israelites. So when they asked him to, you know, make the golden um, calf, he couldn't say no. He couldn't say no. Yeah. The people made him keep back some of the best animals in order to sacrifice them to God. But meanwhile, you were instructed. You were instructed by God to Mm. destroy everything. Kings are supposed to instruct their people, aren't they? But Not the other case, way around. The people ended up detecting for Saul. Hmm. All because of, of all because he feels like I think sometimes we do that because we don't want the people we are leading to feel bad. We don't want to be getting names from them. Oh, you are too hard. Oh, you are too rigid. You are not flexible. You are too harsh and all that. Do things to feel the people we are leading. So sometimes when you say no, people will say you are not being nice. You are so mean. Uh. But you are saying it for a good reason. And at the end, of the, the reason we should, hallelujah. Amen. The is to, being nice may cost you. Being nice may cost you. Look at Lot. Hey, sorry, look at um, so when he be tried nice. to be nice he lost his throne. Oh. Not only that, life. Not only that, he lost the lives of his sons. He lost the sons. But he was being nice to the people. He lost it. He lost everything. He lost the spirit of God. First of all, he lost his throne. He lost his life. And he lost his sons as well. Someone to be liked by everyone. So they will always say yes, but deep within them, they wish they had said no. Oh. They wish they had said no. Hallelujah. Amen. So the sixth one one says that power, not politics. Woman of God, you are doing the first 20 pages. I think you, that's the last chapter, right? Mm, Yes, please. Yes, yes. Yes, so that the sixth is the last chapter you are you are doing. Yes, okay. that ends your twenty pages. All right. So power, not politics. So um, you must be powerful in the Lord because our master is powerful in all his ways. He is he isn't a, a politician. You must be powerful in the Lord. You must not do things to please people. You think you have influence. See, our president, eh? you know, when they, when, when, when they want power, they come, say things, to, you know, entice the people. Oh, so, okay, so they think they have the power. We vote them into power. But when they take over the seats and they are not doing as they promised us, what do we do? 
we vote them out of power. We vote them out of power. So in church, in church, you are giving positions as you are giving position as a deacon. But one day, if you don't, if you if if you don't um, you know, um, if you don't do as the church, as the people want, by the time you realize they'll take you off. If you don't please them anymore, by the time you realize you are being kicked off, your position mm. is being given to another person. Hallelujah. Amen. By the time you realize you are, you are being kicked off. You are being kicked off. In today's, in today's dispensation, when you are given a position in church, meaning you have power, you have money, you get to meet more often, so more seats. So they think, okay, yes, okay, so uh, we can take this person as a deacon. Uh, okay, this person can be a person because he gives money. He gives, you know, he, he has what it takes. You no, know, he's not, he has the authority be. But you need to act under the power of God. You right. need to act under the power of God. Full of the Spirit. That's the criteria. When you say no, it means you are wrong. In this dispensation, when you say no, they think you are wrong. They think you are being so proud. And when you say yes, they think you are right. Hey, they think you are right. Yes, that's why I always go for um, the king, so, so, and so. That's why I always go for minister, so, so, and so. Because when you say it's no, hey, she doesn't hesitate. No, she accepts it. Hey, yeah, she's coming to perform. That's why I always go for you. Hey, as for you, then God will bless you. God will do this. God will do that. God will do that. Like Mr. Kelvin said, you are sitting at your Samuel. Then they come. Then when the temptation comes. Yeah, wrap up. Wrap up. Wrap up. <laughs> wrap up. Don't go there. Wrap up. <laughs> so do the things to please people. When James was being killed, Herod realized that it pleases the people. Mm. Mm. It pleased the people. It pleased the people. Sig B says that God does not accept maybe. He does not accept maybe. The only way to heaven is what? Accepting Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. There is heaven and there is hell. So in order to go to heaven, you must first accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Believe that He is the Son of God. Mm. He came to die in His death and His resurrection. That is what qualifies you as a Son of God. You cannot say, eh, 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 no, you, you believe Jesus Christ and not believe in the Holy Spirit and not believe in God. No. Or you cannot say that you believe in God, but Charlie, you are accepting Christ as your Lord and personal say the idea. Nah, no. It's a no, no. He is the only way to heaven. Mm. He is the only way to heaven. It's not a 50-50 thing. It's not a maybe thing. He is the only way to heaven. So as Christians, let me wrap up. So as Christians, let us learn to say no. Saying it may cost you. Saying it may cost you. But you must think about it before you say the no. If it is if it is a yes, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Just be genuine. Be truthful to yourself. Be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, I will end here. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you, woman of God. You said so much about this. And the reason I, I'm led for us to learn, use this book actually and to read it is because I personally paid high prices because I never learned to say no on time. I never learned to say no. And I paid lots of painful, painful prices for that. Um, I'm not saying you should always say no, but when it's needed, say it without fear. Say it humbly. Say it respectfully. But especially if you don't have the nod of God, decline. Don't trust 
that somebody is being led by the spirit. Peter was led by the spirit to declare who Jesus is. The next moment, Peter was being led by the devil to say something else. You can't trust what somebody says. Let the spirit of God give you discernment. And discernment comes from maturity like we learned from today. And maturity will give you the grace to say no. Okay? Mm. Need to say, don't be too quick to say because sometimes it's your flesh speaking. Okay? If you need time to sleep over it, request for it. Don't be in a hurry to give an answer. Sometimes you finish saying it and deep in your heart, you announce doing something that is not from your heart. And God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't want you to, to give him gradually. He doesn't want you to serve him gradually. Do it from your heart. Woman of God, you have blessed us tonight. And it's our prayer that the Lord will continue to expand your scope, expand your ministry, expand understanding, expand your wisdom, and expand your ability to communicate with word, with, with authority, and with power. God bless you for availing yourself Next week, God willing, Minister Kelvin will lead us to the next 20 pages of this book. And I believe it's also going to be a power pack experience. By the grace of God, we'll be rounding up the first part of our mentorship program on the 12th of August. On the 12th of August. Please take note. That is going to be our final meeting for this group of mentorship. Um, I'll announce the next date. For new enrollments but that will be the last meeting we'll be meeting uh, please keep pressing prayers we are still ministering doing school rounds and stuff i've not updated the pages with pictures and videos yet i just want to give it some time and then you we'll soon see what god is using us to do out there we'll be meeting on tuesday dawn for our prayers and then um Yes, Saturday we'll continue with the part three of this particular session. I think that's about announcing that we have mentorship meetings one on one. We'll continue. Kelvin, you missed your session this week. Yes, I don't know why. Let me know what happened. If you are going to come next week, let me know. God bless you, one of you, for coming around. Tomorrow, most of you ministering prayer that. The Lord will empower you in your churches to be a blessing to anyone who comes in contact with you. May the Lord use your mind to bless his people. Um, thank you once again, Pastor Michael. Thank you once again, Pastor Ochoku, for coming around. Um, Minister Kelvin, kindly close us with a word of bless us for the night. Please check your background. Check your background. All right. so, Father, all right. we thank you. We thank you for all that you've told us today. We thank you for this awesome time of fellowship. For all that we've learned, Father. We thank you that you are sparing us onto maturity, to that place where we become your, we become stewards worthy of that worthy of your calling, stewards that that are able to take care of that which you've, you've put into our hands because Lord, we have been matured and we resemble, we walk, we walk as Christ walks on this earth and Christ lives through us and you living through us, bring people onto yourself because you are exalted in our lives. Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. And uh, we pray committing um, honeycomb mentors also into your hands, so God. Father, Lord, every movement, every action, anything that is going on with, with uh, in honeycomb, oh God, Father, Lord, and even in this mentorship, mentorship session, Lord, we thank you, oh God, we bless your name, oh God. Now for each and everyone on this on this platform, oh God, uh, for, for our, our men of God, oh Lord, and for our vision, Lord, we commit them into your hands. We thank you, oh God, that for, for, for 
the, their presence. We thank you for their, your anointing upon their lives. The woman of God, oh God, who ministered. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing upon her life. Lord, I pray, oh God, that, that your anointing upon her life will grow from grace to grace, oh God. Father, Lord, let her be soaked with your presence. Let her be soaked with your power. Let her be soaked with a deeper dimension, oh God, of, 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 of intimacy with you. Father, Lord, we pray, oh God, that, Lord, take her deeper and deeper into your word. Lord, let her eyes be open. Oh God, even as she sits behind your word to study, Lord, let your word come alive in her. Let your word come alive in her life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that hold her hands, oh God, teach her hands to walk, even as you said in your word, oh God, teach her hands to walk, oh God, even as you said your word, oh God, rightly dividing the word and in truth, oh God, Father Lord, I bless your I bless your name concerning her life, Lord, even as she has poured of her self, oh God. Father, Lord, I pray that you feel her to overflowing, oh God. And I pray same, oh God, uh, uh, for the, 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 the lady of the house, the visionary of the, of, of, of the house, oh God. Uh, uh, lady, lady, queen, says, oh God. Father, Lord, I pray concerning all that con for, for all that concerns her, even as she, she poured of herself, oh God, speaking unto us, oh God, Father, Lord, let her be replenished, oh God. Uh, let her be replenished from the and, and anything that she has lost, any virtue, oh God, uh, uh, Father Lord, uh, re re replenish it a, a thousand times, multiples, or multiples and more, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, take, 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 have, have, have absolute control, oh God, Father Lord, at the end of the day, oh God, it is your purpose and your will, oh God, that will be fulfilled in her life, oh God, as well, oh God, hold her hand, oh God, and direct, direct her, oh God, uh, guide her, oh God, uh, Father Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, uh, uh, Lord, uh, lift her above every storm, lift her above every storm, lift her above every storm, every storm, lift her above every storm, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Carry her on your wings and Amen. let your might, uh, anointing increase mightily upon her life. Amen. Father Lord, I thank you and I bless your name, oh God. I thank you for, for, for Pastor Michael and I thank you for I thank you for Pastor Michael, oh God, for always being with us, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for such an awesome man, Lord, that you you have set, oh God, as 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 a partner in this as a partner in this ministry, oh God. We bless your name for his life, oh God, Father Lord. I pray that all that he loses by being here, Father Lord, you replenish a thousand times and more in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, oh God, for the man of God, Mr. Anim. Father, uh, Pastor Anim, oh God, I commit him also into your hands, oh God, even for being here, even for taking time, oh God, to even visit us, oh God, Father, Lord, I bless your name for his life. I pray that, Lord, your hand will rest mightily upon him as well, in the mighty name of Jesus. And in all of these things we say, that, Lord, thank you very much, thank you, Lord, for even having been here with us, even having heard us, for you said that, Lord, if you said that when 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 your people come together and you speak, oh God, Lord, your ear comes down to hear them, oh God. And so we thank you that you've heard us, oh God. And even before we lift up our voices in prayer, oh God, you've already answered us. We thank you, oh God, that at the end of the day, your will and your will alone is being fulfilled in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man of Amen. God, for praying for us, for blessing us. And for, uh, and for blessing us. God bless you, man of God. The Lord replenish every virtue that has left you. Good measure, praise God, shaking together in back of all that you have ministered into our lives. May the Lord give that back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, 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 Lord. The Holy Spirit. Spirit. Be with us Be now. now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days, all the days of, of our lives. And we shall dwell in their dwell house, in the house of the Lord. forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless the people of God. Enjoy your sleep. Bye-bye. Amen. Bye. -bye. Amen. Bye.